from food that you have eaten have to be absorbed into your body through the walls of the GI tract. The first part of the GI tract is the oral cavity, where both mechanical and chemical digestion of food occurs. The teeth break down food into small pieces, and the tongue can form it into a ball, which is swallowed by the muscles of the swallow reflex. Salivary glands secrete liquid and enzymes in order to break down the food chemically. The esophagus is a tube of smooth muscle that contracts in a wave motion, pushing the food along its course. The food then enters the stomach at the esophageal gastric junction. The stomach churns to mix food up. This mechanical action of churning is innervated by parasympathetic nerves. When this process is completed, the pyloric sphincter will open. The duodenum is the first part of the small intestine, and a large amount of absorption occurs here. It is really the powerhouse of absorption. The duodenum engages in a negative feedback loop, meaning that it allows food to enter from the stomach when empty, and when the duodenum is full, it sends signals to the stomach not to open the pyloric sphincter. The entry of chyme into the duodenum also signals the liver and gallbladder to release bile, and it signals the pancreas to release its pancreatic enzymes. These help the digestion, absorption, and metabolism of food in the duodenum. The small intestine is the next area through which food travels. It is very long and has thousands of microvilli on its surface, creating a huge surface area. The appendix is at the start of the large bowel or large intestine. The large intestine has an ascending, transverse, and descending part, ending in the sigmoid colon and then the rectum, which will store feces before they are excreted.